quakes. And seismic data shows that these killer quakes are caused by subduction, the movement of the seabed, which also builds the Ring of Fire's giant volcanoes. To discover exactly where this awesome process of subduction occurs, oceanographers search for the deepest and most inaccessible places on the entire planet. The journey to understand why the Pacific Ring of Fire is so volatile has revealed the critical role of subduction, which pushes the seabed deep down into the earth. In Alaska's Prince William Sound, investigators search for where the seafloor is vanishing below the land. There are um, ridges, outcrops, canyons, gullies, um, mountains underwater. And so the ability to make a continuous map of the seafloor and get a full picture of it gives you the ability to understand how the seafloor is put together and what it has to do with the way the Earth functions. Reynolds is using high-tech echo sounding technology to monitor the exact depth of the seafloor. A sound wave is sent from beneath the ship. The time it takes to reach the seafloor and return gives an accurate reading of depth. Reynolds' research shows that all around the Alaskan coast, the seabed is relatively shallow. But farther out towards the open ocean, the readings change dramatically. So in general, around the world, when you go out from land, you cross over a relatively flat shelf down the slope and into the deep ocean basin, which is very flat. But around the ring of fire, as you go out from land, across the shelf, down the slope, instead of going directly into a flat ocean basin, you go across a very deep trench. These trenches are the deepest areas on the planet. And the one around Alaska reaches approximately 21,000 feet. These giant features are called subduction trenches. The largest are deep enough to swallow all of Mount Everest. They mark the exact spot where the seafloor disappears down into the earth. The process that jolts the land in megathrust earthquakes and forms the volcanoes that make the Ring of Fire so dangerous. The Ring of Fire is named for these volcanoes that circle the Pacific Ocean. But offshore of the volcanoes, wherever you have a chain of volcanoes, you also have one of these deep ocean trenches. The location and shape of the Ring of Fire is determined not by its famous volcanoes, but by the position of these deep subduction trenches miles out in the ocean. And by mapping the location of all the trenches in the Pacific Ocean, scientists have made a further, even more significant discovery. High-tech imaging has made it possible for scientists to visualize the Earth drained of its oceans. This reveals that these deep trenches outline the edge of a giant rock slab, or plate, that makes up the entire floor of the Pacific Ocean. This huge Pacific plate is one of 14 plates which cover the entire surface of the planet. Subduction occurs where this plate rubs against one of its neighbors, producing the line of volcanoes which extends all around the Pacific. But the investigation isn't finished. Experts journey to Tiger Mountain in Washington state to figure out how such huge plates can be shifted against each other. GPS that you use to drive around can tell you where you're at on a city block or on a street to within a meter or so. But in geology, we're interested in centimeter to millimeter accuracy so that we can track the changing of the land. It's much more subtle. High on the mountainside, Flake has set up a GPS marker point. Here we are on Tiger Mountain. This is our GPS unit. What we have is these metal rods going into solid bedrock, cemented in so that there's no motion. This GPS antenna allows us to measure point positions per day of where this spot is. 
A network of these GPS antennas across North America provides evidence for the monumental forces which power the Ring of Fire. This is just a single antenna. There's hundreds all across the Western United States to give us a better picture of what's going on with the ground surface. By combining all the data of these GPS, we're able to see that North America is actually moving. The entire continent is moving westwards at about three inches per year. This movement is possible because the Earth's crust rides upon a hot, soft layer of rock called the mantle. Well, the mantle is so hot and it's such a high pressure and the temperature is hotter as you get towards the center of the Earth. That's gonna want to move out and convect just like a boiling pot of water. And so it creates a convection current coming up to the surface, which then drags along those plates on top. These phenomenal convection currents force the Pacific plate into its neighbors, driving the process of subduction. As the plates get dragged by the mantle convection currents, they impede upon other plates. One has to give, so one dives down underneath another, and then the trapped water from its ocean sediment escapes and melts the upper lying mantle, and that creates hot magma that rises to the surface and creates the volcanoes that form around the Ring of Fire. The investigation into the forces that drive the Ring of Fire has now found subduction trenches that reveal the shape of the entire Pacific Plate, and GPS data providing evidence for the convection currents which force this giant plate against its neighbors. It is this movement of the entire Pacific Plate and the resulting subduction of the seafloor down the trenches that shapes and builds the Ring of Fire. But one final mystery remains. Vast sections of the seafloor are constantly being destroyed. But despite millions of years of subduction down these trenches, the planet's seafloors have never been eradicated. The geology detectives can now reveal why. All around the Ring of Fire, enormous volcanoes dot a landscape warped by violent earthquakes. Offshore, the seafloor is swallowed down giant subduction trenches. But despite millions of years of subduction, the area of seafloor remains roughly the same. Geologists could only assume one thing. Somewhere far out in the ocean, volcanic activity must be creating new seafloor rocks, replacing those destroyed here during subduction. Beginning in 1977, a series of expeditions set out to investigate where this occurred. Scientists realized that if volcanic activity was constructing new seabed, the surrounding water should be warm. The Alvin submersible was equipped with high-tech sensors to discover where this warm water existed. To begin with, the crew searched the seafloor without any luck. But then they hit the jackpot. A column of rock pumping out superheated water. This is a black smoker. Measurements of the water around these features have found temperatures in excess of 750 degrees Fahrenheit. This heat comes from magma welling up from inside the planet. It was a discovery that provided the evidence the scientists needed. These volcanic marvels mark the location of giant features called mid-ocean ridges. At these ridges on the bottom of the ocean, powerful convection currents in the mantle separate Earth's plates, allowing lava to spill out onto the seabed. New oceanic crust is constantly being formed out on the mid-ocean ridges. That crust moves away from those ridges toward the edge of the continents where we're located now. In this way, the seafloor is constantly renewed, replacing material destroyed by subduction at the edges of the ocean. These mid-ocean ridges exist at the bottom of every ocean on Earth. 
they provide a never-ending supply of new rock, keeping alive the entire plate tectonic cycle. Well, this is a planetary scale process. This is the, the planet itself circulating and the rock and the magma from deep inside the Earth welling up to the surface, forming this crust. And then that crust dives back down into the Earth at the subduction zones, at the trenches. And it, it's mixed back into the solid Earth. So great is the power driving this system that experts see no end to the constant movement of plates around the planet. The forces involved with plate tectonics caused by the heating from the inner core of the Earth is so astronomical that there is nothing that will stop it. It seems like uh, the ring of fire will go on for some period of time. It looks as if we've been having subduction here underneath southern Alaska on the order of 200 million years. And uh, it looks like it, uh, th there's no evidence that's going to stop anytime soon. But over the coming billions of years, the ongoing movement of plates will redraw the map of the world. The Pacific plate is moving and things on it uh, ride with uh, the plates that are being subducted. So for example, the Hawaiian Islands are moving up here to Alaska. Uh, parts of California are moving up here to Alaska. Baja, California is moving north here to Alaska. So apparently Alaska is a popular place to be. It'll be the uh, resting place of all these things. So the map of the Pacific will slowly change, driven by the immense force of subduction. This is the real story of the Ring of Fire. Subduction creates the magma plumes which build the region's explosive volcanoes. Subduction powers the violent megathrust earthquakes that shake the region, leveling whole cities in seconds and causing killer tsunamis. This process of subduction just releases an enormous amount of energy through both uh, earthquakes, through building these mountains, through volcanoes. It's just uh, really inconceivably huge. This is what makes the Ring of Fire the most geologically active and most deadly place on the entire planet. You see the whole picture of creation and destruction of a plate in the Pacific Ocean. And the Ring of Fire is the boundary of that cycle, and it's the place where all the destruction is happening. Geology detectives have now pieced together the evidence for what makes the Ring of Fire so dangerous and discovered what powers it. Violent eruptions of explosive blocky lava build the Ring of Fire's famous volcanoes. Mixed rocks from the seafloor found miles inland are evidence for the process of subduction that builds the volcanoes. Raised shorelines are evidence for giant megathrust earthquakes caused deep underground by subduction. And GPS plots provide evidence for the immense convection currents deep in the earth which drive the entire system. These giant forces have built the Ring of Fire. The energy that drives this whole convective system is really without parallel on the Earth. There's nothing else that we can compare to as far as the amount of energy and the force that moves the continents around, compresses them against one another, drags one down beneath the other, really just off.